what's up everyone and welcome back. This is Kyle with RR Buildings and I'm gonna do a video all about how we use chains, which you can see behind me, to not only secure our building but also straighten it and make it perfect so that we can put our metal exterior siding on it. Now, this is obviously something that is very heavily influenced in the construction of a post frame structure. However, some of these tips and tricks and other, um, I guess, methods that we use might be very useful to you if you're framing up anything, whether it be stick frame, metal frame, or post frame construction. So the first thing I wanted to show you is we've got a little bit of a unique build. Um, it's on a foundation wall, which means we didn't have to drill any holes into the ground to pour our concrete piers. Now what that also means is that I didn't have to bring in a concrete truck so normally uh, I'm just gonna get the elephant out of the room right now this big old concrete block behind me basically this concrete block right here we bring in if we're not gonna be the ones digging the holes putting the foundation in and it's just really like a dead man is what we call it and it's just gonna sit there we've got a piece of rebar looped on it it's about 4,000 pounds and we chain to it to help aid in our bracing and straightening of the building. So that's what that is, I just wanted to get that right out of there. So the first thing that we like to do is whenever we start framing up our walls, before we put any trusses on, we're gonna do what we call our X brace. And all it really is, all we're really doing is we're taking chain from the top of the post where our bottom cord of our truss is gonna be, which you can see, and we're bringing it down on a nice angle. We try to keep that angle less than 45 degrees and it's not always possible really it's not all that you know important when you're using chain but if you're utilizing a wooden framing member to do your bracing understand that anything greater than 45 so the the steeper that angle gets the weaker your bracing is going to be this is our x brace we use it on our walls and we do that to not only keep it strong but also we can push and pull a chain in order to plumb up our wall one way or the other so what we'll do, I'll just show you real quick, and we'll probably have to do this later on and I'll show you exactly how we utilize this method to straighten our walls. But um, yes, a binder is not as nice as one of those ratchet binders. This is a snap binder, which basically it's just snapping over top of itself. And through that, it pulls it tighter and creates more tension. But if you need to adjust this wall, let's say we wanna pull this wall this way, all we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, and this one's actually pretty tight, so I'm not gonna actually do it on this one. That's a great example, Kyle. But you're just gonna take another link up, and then when you tighten it down, it's gonna be tighter, which is gonna inherently bring the wall this way. So we always like to snug these up, um, and right now we're just temporarily snugged so that we can um, basically install our trusses. So we haven't zeroed it in perfectly for plumb, although we do take our plate level, which is a 12 foot level, and make sure that we're as close as possible. Uh, just because the more work you do now at this stage, the less work you have to do later on. So now the next thing is, once we get our three walls done, which are typically our two side walls, that's what's bearing the weight of the trusses, we get those locked in with our X braces and we X brace our end wall, we're gonna put up that first truss. And that first truss is very crucial. And not only is it crucial, but it's also probably the most dangerous one to do because there's really nothing holding it other than um, really the brackets down here and the columns that are standing up. So that strength is what's holding that truss up. We don't really like that. So once we get it up, we'll kind of temporarily brace it and then we'll put chains up to the peak. Now these chains go all the way to the peak. Depending on how big the building is, depends on how many chains we utilize. This is a 66 foot wide truss. So typically we're gonna do just a center chain and that's gonna go up to the peak on both sides. You'll see if you look out there and I'll show you, we've got another concrete block that is sitting on the other side of those trees and we're running our peak chains from the top of this truss both ways. We're coming back here and then we're going out there to that block. And what that's doing is that's locking that truss in so it can't move. If a big windstorm comes up, it's gonna be nice and locked down because not only is the peak being held firm, but remember that wall that it's sitting on is also being held with that X brace. So it really locks it down nice. And once we get this stage done, we're ready to start trussing. And as we truss, I'll show you guys some of the other chain techniques that we utilize to keep the building not only strong, but also to keep it straight. All right, we just got done with the second bay. Now that we have the second bay done, 
We're gonna go ahead and get it braced up and then uh, we'll drop all of our chains and get this, get this thing secured. Now, whenever we're laying out these chains at the top quarter of the truss, we're also thinking about where our columns are coming up. So right here on this gusset plate, you can see this guy, this is where a column is. So it's just nice to have the strength of the building being um, held up at a column location. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna get that chain around. I'm gonna kind of lock that in. Got these sweet buckets. It holds a 50 foot chain, no problem. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're holding this tight so it doesn't come undone. Drop it, then the weight of the chain will keep this. And then that's what we'll take back. We'll show you that when we get to the ground. Now, once again, I'm just using some snap binders. And what we're gonna do is, now that we've got this chain mounted up here on the top quarter of the truss, Just bring it over here. Now what I always like to do, not everybody does this on the team, but that's okay. I just always fit my hook through the handle of this jug. That way I know it's never gonna blow away. We are working out here in the middle of God's country and the wind sometimes will pick up like crazy. But I'm just gonna mount this and I'm gonna snug it up to one of these bolts. And the reason we're doing that is because as soon as we put our grade board, it's gonna go out here. We gotta move all these if we go down, down low. So we just kind of come off of this top one. And I'm gonna snug that up. I'm gonna kind of, you know, get it somewhat snug. You're never gonna be able to pull this chain super tight just because the weight of it. And that's probably too tight. So I'm, I'm gonna go down one more chain. No, maybe not. Kind of a feeling thing too. There's no exact science until we actually come and try to straighten the building, which will be, oh yeah, that feels nice. So you want some good tension on this thing. When I bring this peak chain back, there's a good chance it's gonna hit my bottom cord. Let's see what happens. I always try to make this as tight as possible to get the, the tightest link I can. Helps with the slide off. Another little lesson too is you always want to pull the snap binders down. That way gravity's always helping you out. You might feel that's just barely grabbing that. Just barely grabbing the bottom cord. I think we'll move it. Yeah, it might be a little much. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and we'll move it right over top of that web. That way it goes through there. So we'll get on the lift and we'll just fish it through and that way we got a cleaner path. But, you know, I think you can kind of see how this is starting to come together. We've got basically X's coming from that third truss in back down to the wall. And then we've got them coming from the peak on that end truss back down to this concrete block. And really this is how we're gonna secure the building. This is not how we're trying to straighten it out yet. We're gonna straighten it out when we get ready for roofing. All right, so now that we've got that wall braced on the end wall with all of our cross chains, we're gonna do another cross chain and it's usually about 16 to 24 foot in depending on the size of the building. Since we're bracing this 24 foot post, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bring a chain from the uh, one of the webs of the truss, another maybe 16 foot in and I'm gonna bring it back to the side wall. This time um, looking to hopefully brace the building from any any sorts of winds that might get pushed on the side of it while we're still framing it. Uh, check this out, that we got this awesome high-vis green chain, uh, Laclede chain, I think it's in St. Louis, somewhere over in that area. Uh, it's American-made chain, and they just saw what we were doing here on YouTube, educating people, um, and you know, really just utilizing chain in a kind of a unique manner that a lot of people don't do. A lot of you know typical people will brace with their framing lumber and then tear it down at the end of the job and then use it on their job. Well, we've invested in chain and I think we've got probably 25, maybe 25 to 30 quarter inch chain. All of them are about 50 foot. That seems to be the right dimension. And every job we use it and we take it to the next job. So it's kind of a nice, uh, I guess it's just a nice way to, to brace your building, use it to uh, square things up, level it up and it, it doesn't break like lumber does. So what our goal here is, we're just gonna try to find a nice spot that's kind of taut. Yeah, that works. 
and then we're just gonna check for plumb on the post. Oh my God, I mean, I didn't even, this is a first take, guys. I didn't even mean to do that, but of course I meant to do it, but didn't think it would happen. So this one is pretty plumb, which means when we go to do the one that pulls back that way, because we'll have an, an opposite reacting chain that's gonna pull us that way, and that's what's gonna keep us tight from any wind forces. Um, I don't wanna over tighten it, but I gotta make it taut as well, and then I'll recheck the level over on that column. All right, now that is the, uh, that's basically how we use chains to secure our building, basically in the starting frame stage. Uh, that's not actually the way that we're going to utilize chain to straighten out, plumb up the walls, straighten them out. But I think that'll give you a good idea as to how the chain can be utilized. And when you're done, you're just gonna drop them, pack them up, take them to the next job. So I don't know if that was helpful to anybody out there, but hopefully that was worth my time doing it. I know a lot of you have asked the question on how we use chain. I'll also try to do a little bit of a, maybe maybe I'll add to this video with a little bit of uh, how we utilize that chain to straighten the building as well. So now that we have all of our trusses done, it's time to put a roof on this structure. And what we have to first do is get everything plumb. All four corners need to be plumb always. And then what we'll do is we'll go up and we'll square the peak to our eave. Now this is where chains come into place because we've got those X braces on all of our walls and we'll utilize them to make sure that Basically every wall is perfectly plumb, or as perfect as we can get it. I mean, nothing is ever perfect, but we do our best. How are they, Greg? Good, those three walls are good. I just gotta do that back wall. Then... All right, let's do this, let's do this back wall. So we've, we've already checked all the walls, but now all we're gonna do is we've got this nice plate level here, and Greg is just gonna throw that up on the wall. I mean, that's... So we don't need to do anything? I don't know. I don't know. Depends on what that, so that back post says, but. All right, well, that's pretty dang good. Now we're always gonna check both corners. We don't just do one and call it a day. We'll check both corners because there's instances, especially when we're doing um, non-foundation wall buildings where we're putting the piers in the ground, um, especially on an end wall, trusses aren't always exactly the dimension we want and we can't just cut them down. We kind of got to run with it. What's this one say, Greg? It shows it's lean out up top, so we need to pull it that way. Okay, so. I don't know if you can see that from right there. You might come on the outside. Now this guy, if you get really close, oh my gosh, Greg, I mean, we're talking in 12 foot, maybe, that maybe, uh, yeah. So now that you can see that level bubble there, it's, I mean, we're talking so close. Um, we're gonna utilize this chain right here to pull the building, right, your way, Greg? No, I'm going your way. Okay, I wasn't reading the level very well. Depending on how tight we have those chains initially, you know, will determine whether or not we're able to take a whole chain link or if we just have to put a wedge board on it. These walls, and any time we do a foundation wall, if we take the time in the beginning to make sure it's square, straight, and on our layout side, and then put those columns up with our level, that really plums up the building and makes it really nice. We might take it a little bit too much. I'll probably take, a, take it off and then put the wedge on. All right, so one bite was a little bit too much, so that's good for showing the video. We'll go ahead, put it back one link, and then we'll shove a, a board underneath of it and just tighten it up. It's a little overkill. Now obviously we could use some nice ratchet binders. Um, we've got a couple, we just don't have a whole fleet of them. And maybe over time I'll replace these snap binders, but that's just what we've always used and it's, it's really not that hard to just do some fine adjustment with a wedge board. What do you say, Greg? Hair more and we'll Okay, now we'll go up and we'll get the peak straightened out. 
All right, now that we're up here on the scissor lift and you can see I got this nice string line here and we basically run that from end truss to end truss and we've plumbed up those end trusses uh, with that plate level, ensuring that we're as plumb as possible on all four corners. And that means if we make sure that all of our tails are also in line with the string line that we've ran, that we're going to be straight. If we run into some of these columns that are not plumbed up nice, that's where the chains are gonna come into place. So we're gonna utilize these chains. We've got two chains on the same bottom cord of the truss. And that's up top reading that square against the line. And he's telling me I need to bring this just this way. Now, yes, if we had a ratchet binder, we could just give it a couple cranks, but we got scrap boards. It's just as easy to throw it under the chain oh. and just give it a little, it doesn't take much. Come back. We'll put on. You need a little more? Okay, so just like that, you can use the chain. Now that's a lot easier than having some two by fours or whatever it is, and you're trying to hold them up, you're screwing them to the top of the truss and you're pushing and pulling. This is very easy. Now sometimes we're able to use a long enough two by that we just wedge underneath the top of that truss or the bottom cord truss up at the top of the post. And that's sometimes enough to move an eighth or so, but when it gets too extreme like this one was, we thought we would get it. We'll just throw another chain up. So there you go guys, that is what we use chains for to not only secure and brace down our building during the construction phase, but also how we use those chains because they're already up there. We don't have to put them up there again. Yes, we add some in some certain locations, but for the most part, those chains that we put up there to brace our buildings, we then use to straighten it so that we can get ready for our roof steel and then also those X's on the wall. We'll leave those up until we get our permanent X bracing, which we don't always do. It depends on the size of the building, what the finishes are, and all that good stuff. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made some sense. And maybe even if you're not post framing, you can utilize some of these tips or techniques on your next framing job. So until the next time, we'll see you guys later. Make sure if you enjoyed this video or you enjoyed any of the videos, or you wanna get some more information for future videos, hit that subscribe button. And um, you know, obviously give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment if there was something I missed or something that you still don't understand. And I'll try to clarify it. Thanks a lot guys and have a good one. I'll catch it. You'll catch it? No. <laughs> <laughs>